Hello and welcome to another conversation with Lara and myself. How are you doing, babe? I'm very good, and you? That's excellent. That's excellent. What well, people, um, I'm, I'm doing well. Are you happy about this new tea? I actually am. I am happy about this tea. Um, so we've, what, what tea is this again? It's apple and cranberry with a hint mm. of cinnamon. I tell you what, it's, remember that time we went to the Mount Nelson for the teas and stuff? Yes, yes. And we had that like, I don't know if it was similar, but it was like, it was like a berry tea. Yes, I was expecting yes. to have that in this cup. That was disgusting. This is actually really tasty. I, I could do this. I didn't mind that berry tea. Is it? No, yeah. I thought it was like, it was blood red and it was, it was too intense. She did, I think she did over. Over brew it. Over brew it. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> but this is this I can this I can live with because we're doing what are we doing? We're doing um, vanilla rooibos at home, yeah, and then rooibos ch- uh, vanilla chai. I yeah. think we're also doing yes. and rooibos. I'm actually really getting into teas. Hmm. This is this is good. I'm actually this is I I you have my coffee's a stamp of approval. <laughs> Your coffee stamp of approval. What's that? That is um, a coffee person a, um, approving of a tea. Uh, okay. So so far, rooibos, vanilla rooibos, and then this is this isn't rooibos, is it? No, no, it's a salon tea, a salon tea. with the infusion. Yeah, I like that. I like that. We're getting into our teas. Um, so yeah, let us know. Like, what's your favorite tea? I wouldn't <laughs> mind knowing that because you can just get a tea community. Um, <laughs> to, a tea time with uh, the yeah. Anyway, we don't have a surname that starts with a T, so that doesn't work. Yes. Has to be alliteration. Um, but uh, what other teas have we got on the menu? We got we're gonna like mix it up over the next couple We've of weeks. We've got chamomile, chamomile. Uh, peppermint. Wait, will chamomile put us to sleep? It might make us sleepy, okay. especially since it's the afternoon and okay. it's already a sleepy time. Okay, okay, but well, I could do that. I can have a snooze. <laughs> <laughs> we also have lemon and ginger. That one could be dodgy. Like, that could go either way. Well, you like ginger, but I don't. No, I do. I really like... Uh, I well, don't I don't like, like a lot of ginger. I like splashes of ginger. Like, ginger in mm. juice, because just, it just feels good going down, and you know your body's going to love it. It's going to no, thrive. It it's going to thrive. Yeah, it burns, but... <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Um, that's good. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we're, this is our third episode, the second one with you and me. Uh, in it and um, we want to talk about today about the use of spiritual gifts within the mm-hmm. within the church within the body of Christ and and sort of how we're um, called to steward that and to let the Holy Spirit lead and guide and to be quiet to play with open cards this was a, a conversation or, or or at least a question that came from someone within our church which i i thought they actually handled it really well because mm-hmm. it's sometimes difficult to ask difficult questions and they did it with a lot of humility like i want to find out yes. help me to understand yes. and they took it with a lot of grace as well and you mm-hmm. know because i think there's people that come from very different um church backgrounds you know this is not the kind of question that someone who's recently come to know jesus would be asking but it's more like an Mm. established believer and how do we see um, the use of spiritual gifts within not just the church because i think the church you kind of expect that yeah okay there will be spiritual gifts used but uh, they can't their um, question was more related to how is the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit used on a sunday yes like that's yes. that was the that was more the framing of the mm. question because there's no mm. doubt in my mind that we want to see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in like in the use of the church, yes. um, but it's almost like where and when and how. Mm. Well, what do you what's what's your thoughts on on spiritual uh, the manifestations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Because I mean you've been mm. you've been a Christian since you had your first cry. <laughs> Um. <laughs> you were just pray. You were prayed into existence. I was. That's a real. That's a joke. Okay. <laughs> just in case someone I out there is like. I was prayed over. You were. No, no. But like salvation comes by grace alone, <laughs> not through. Like. But before we get sidetracked. <laughs> Why not? Let's stay sidetracked. <laughs> We definitely use the spiritual gifts on a Sunday. So I'm glad you clarified the question Mm. because there are people with helps and hospitality and 
musicality, all using their gifts. So it's not that. It's the manifestation mm. of the spirits on mm. a Sunday and how that should be like what is our view on that in the yeah, church yeah and a lot of the time people are referring to sort of those nine sort of power you know quote unquote power yes. gifts I, mean, I can't remember where it is is it it's either in romans or, or corinthians 12 or something like that yeah so it would be things like prophecy mm. speaking in tongues um words of knowledge um discernment mm. um interpretation of tongues mm. Those Miracles, types of things. faith, yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Um, and and what is your sort of experience or track record, shall I say, of witnessing the manifestations of the gifts in the in the churches that you've been in? Because for me, I've only been in like revived church mm. is my third church, but it came out of my second church. So it's like I've only really yes. been in two environments, yes. and we. We launched the third one. So I don't have... So, I've only seen yes. what happens on YouTube and yes. what you heard. So I was a teenager in church when there was the Toronto Blessing, which was quite um, a in-your-face manifestation of the Spirit. And I will never say it was or it wasn't from God, because I will never speak against the spirits. Um, and the people who were touched in the spirit were God-fearing people who wanted to follow God and serve Him, and they were in a church service and they were touched in the spirit. Yeah. Um, so I'm not saying that wasn't that was like fake or yeah. weird. I'm saying it was just what it was at that time. Yeah. A move of God through globally called the Toronto Blessing because yes. it started in Toronto. Yes. And then you would see um, people showing physical signs, um, crying, falling over, mm. um, just having physical movements that that they wouldn't do normally <clears throat> speaking in tongues. And um, and I think that definitely there is a place for crying in the spirit, falling in the spirit, speaking in tongues in the spirit, mm. because um, we experience God, we experience the Holy Spirit, mm. and it touches our emotions. I myself have cried in the spirit, and I've almost fallen over in the spirit. Mm. Um, and I wasn't forcing anything mm. or trying to cry or um, faking anything. It was a real experience mm. of the spirit. Yeah, that's good. And so I think there is a place for that in the church, mm. definitely, to be filled with the spirit. But... Being filled with the Spirit is for a purpose, and that purpose is to be bold to reach other people with the gospel. Good. And so I, we mustn't chase the experience just to feel that emotion mm. and leave it there. We must say, am I growing spiritually because of this experience? Am I reaching other people because of this experience? Because it's not goosebumps for goosebumps. Mm. It's... God wants us to grow more like Jesus mm. and to tell other people about him. Yeah. And so there must be a purpose in it mm. and uh, equipping, emboldening. Um, and I think because it feels so amazing when the Spirit is touching you that mm. people can become addicted to that feeling mm. and they can chase it and they can go from meeting to meeting and church to church chasing that feeling of the spirits mm. but if it just stays there if it's only just a feeling and nothing more mm. then i don't think um i don't think that the fullness of it is being realized yeah sure so, i think it's a lot of wisdom yeah. like a lot of wisdom there because 
You know, we don't want to. Even Jesus said when the disciples came back to him, said, "Oh, the you know the demons they they are they subject to us." And mm-hmm. he said, "Hey, don't rejoice in the fact that demons are subject to you. Rejoice because your names are in heaven." Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's that that the the use of the gifts, but also the communion of the Holy Spirit. Like, how do you commune? How do you relate with Him mm-hmm. every single day? Because mm-hmm. He's He's there to help you, lead you, and guide you, and He's there to anoint you and come upon you for works of ministry. Um, and we we can't throw the manifestation gifts out because we need that in the church. It's it's, it's like this is the Holy Spirit is mm-hmm. the distributor of the gifts, mm-hmm. and He distributes them as He sees need. Right? If we honor His presence, then then he says, "Need like he'll do it," but and and Paul says in Corinthians, like uh, like desire the gift, like earnestly desire yes. the gifts, yes. but we can't manufacture it. And I think if we try, we would we actually cause more hurt, hurt harm, mm-hmm. and damage mm-hmm. than if we don't. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I've you know been in places in church and myself, like we've had prophecy you know given prophecy had words of knowledge had mm-hmm. um faith like supernatural faith for certain things mm-hmm. um i myself have laughed and cried in the spirit like but i think it's always to know hey we're all supposed to say your subject like the like in a sense that the holy spirit doesn't take over you and control you like a puppet mm-hmm. like you actually have control over yourself yes. um yes. and so so like i always think you know, we mustn't just come in one, but there's actually, there's a, there's not like a balance. I don't want to say a balance because balance is an overused word, I think, but there is wisdom in how to use and how to let, not let down. It's like, it's almost like we're governing, um, but mm. how to, that there's freedom for the spirit, mm. um, that we don't stifle him, but also that we're not trying to manufacture anything. And mm. so um, what does, like, what, what, the question came up was really good because they said that hey we we know that from our church's belief statements that we believe in the manifestations of the gifts of the holy spirit yes. the manifestation means his power at work like the outworking and uh, but the question was like why don't we see a lot of that on a sunday necessarily like are we being spirit led are we not and it's a good like i just think it was an honest and a good question and I just kind of pointed to what Paul was saying mm-hmm. to the Corinthian church in chapter 14 after he does the the gifts of the spirit then he goes on hey love is a better way and then he goes on hey when you when you come together in your services um, he pretty much says you know it's better to speak like what five intelligible words mm-hmm. than it is to speak a thousand words 10,000 words in a tongue yeah. um because those five words can actually build people up yes. who understand it. Yes. And he talks about, let me actually, I've got the scripture here mm. at the bottom. And, it, and he's, um, I'll just highlight the sections that I, he says, um, anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. The one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouragement, encouraging and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. Unless you speak um, intelligible words with your tongue how will anyone know what you are saying and then he goes on to say so what shall i do shall i i will pray with my spirit but i'll also pray with my understanding i'll sing with my spirit but also sing with my understanding and then he goes on to say like because he's saying guys don't don't speak in tongues and have this disorderly service and nobody knows what's going on yeah. if there's someone there who doesn't have the gift of interpretation then don't speak mm. then tongues is not a public thing it's a private thing for the building up of your mm. own soul, mm. your own spirit, like strengthening you. But if someone is there who can interpret and can give the, the interpretation mm. with intelligible words, then go ahead and do it, but do it in an orderly mm. way. So he's not saying don't do don't do the speaking in tongues. And he goes on to say like a little bit of a church flex, you know, humble brag. He goes, but I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. <laughs> but in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Mm. And I think that's the guideline that we want to follow is that um, speaking in tongues is a heavenly language that God gives to believers. Um, and we should probably even just mention, talk about a little bit about that. But there's different types of tongues for different types of situations. And so unless there's someone in our church that we know it has the gift of interpretation mm, and yeah. a, let me even say a proven gift of interpretation, mm. like a tested one, we wouldn't 
we, we wouldn't just get the church all praying in tongues. Yes. Um, and speaking intelligible words is more important in a public setting so that people can be strengthened in their faith. Because like, mm-hmm. you've got people on different journeys, people who are speaking in tongues, who aren't speaking in tongues, people who don't do know Jesus, people who don't know Jesus. There's so many people in the room that we just want to make sure that we're able to yeah. build everybody up yeah in their faith and so it's not like it's just i think there's it's not like it's wrong i just think there's a better setting yes you yes. know and that we we lean in that way with with pretty much most of the manifestation mm-hmm. gifts like unless there's a known person or a trusted person like we probably wouldn't do it because we also don't want to create you know um we don't want to create this culture of you know anyone just comes up and says anything and we don't know what their relationship with jesus is yeah. like so we want to bring that we have this trust with our church um so you know we do there are areas that we do lean into like it's not like we go into the weekend going well let the holy spirit take a break we're gonna we're gonna do this because mm-hmm. we want this i almost think of it this way that the, it's the holy spirit service and we always want to be hearing and seeing Mm. what he wants to do mm. and lead us and guide us in um, but how maybe you can share like how do we do that like how do we well i think um people might think that preparing a message is an intellectual experience or exercise let me say but um the pastors who preach spend time praying and listening to god and really being formed through the message that it's true in their souls and true in the word and so they in a way give birth to the message on sunday Mm. it's not an intellectual exercise that you just get information from the bible and the commentary and then you say it Mm. it's very much a spiritual exercise and then our worship team they need to be following God in their daily lives, um, seeking Him for the songs they need to play, um, how that will bless the service. Yeah. And even our kids' church prays and our frontline team prays. And, um, you know, everyone who's involved is praying and asking God to lead them. And frontline might not seem intensely spiritual because you're welcoming people, but I know they they talk about God in their meetings mm. and the purpose He has for them in the church, mm. and so everyone is being led spiritually. Yeah, and even though it doesn't look super spiritual, mm. but I think um, I think sometimes we we confuse spirituality with a supernatural experience sure sure and i think spirituality is how you're living and how you're serving god Mm. and how you're trying to bless the church um by following him yeah and so what my i think people's perception is not always it's not always clear what they're seeing because they don't see how people are asking god to lead them. yeah 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 uh, i mean i think there's obviously and i, and I acknowledge to them to this this person I said, you know there are ways that we need to always be more open to mm-hmm. what the holy spirit is saying what he mm-hmm. wants to do because you can get so busy in mm-hmm. the running of the service mm-hmm. that you can sort of ignore um what i like to call like sp- like spirit like like uh, an enlightening moment in a sense of like go talk to that person you know go encourage that person go pray for that we can ignore that because of busyness um and and that's something we got to be more aware of Mm -hmm. like let's not get into the busyness of the service but actually hey holy spirit like if you want to do something unusual like i'm open and i'm available always subject to leadership and all that kind of stuff um and even like the, the the way that the band you know in in their preparation they're they're preparing and trusting the holy spirit to to help them mm. to put the 
the songs together for that day. There's mm. a there's a service, a prayer service before every meeting, mm. every um, church service, where we're praying for the Holy Spirit to move. You know, we we trust for transition moments that there's a word of encouragement mm. or prophecy because mm. New Testament prophecy is that encouragement and building yeah, up of the church, um, or words of wisdom. Mm. You know, and sometimes we give words of wisdom from stage or words of prophecy, but we don't. We don't um, phrase it. Thus says the Lord. Yes, you know, we, yes. we we give we give like room there yes. and say this is what I think is happening, or we can or we just say it. And mm. just because we don't preface it with any sort of line doesn't mean it's not from God. Yes. So, um, yeah. So that's it. And and I think like we would we want to, we want God to raise up prophets in our church. Um, and people uh, we, throughout the years, there have been people that have come forward to to want to like submit a word. And trust that the leadership, mm. that God will show the leadership whether that's a word for the church right now mm. or not. And so we w- that's always open, you know, like people can come to the front. We don't publicize it because we don't want just tons of people coming to the front. But yeah. the people who are in leadership who know us always have the freedom to come to us. Mm. Um because I think what you what you were saying before about spirituality versus the manifestation, I'm, I'm using that just to mm. really go on the other side, mm. um, is so important because we've all known people, seen people from afar who have had anointing and have had powerful ministry, but their internal world was falling apart. Mm. Their, their spirituality wasn't, like they weren't close with God. They lost the fear of God or, or whatever along the way. And what we want to make sure is what we bring to God is we know God for ourselves. And what, what he does in our midst is an overflow of that. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, those are just some of the ways that, that, that I like to think about it. Um, yeah, obviously there's, there's things like prophecy, like Old Testament versus New Testament prophecy. Um, what, what are your thoughts on, on the prophetic? I think... Um, in the Old Testament, we read of specific people who were prophets to the nation of Israel. Mm. And and we must remember that in a whole nation, usually there was just one or two mm. or three people who had that office. Yeah. So it wasn't a lot of people, though there were schools of the prophets mm. who were being raised up by prophets to operate in the prophetic mm. But we have records of certain prophets. Mm. Um, And I think in the new covenant that has changed, that has changed slightly because it talks in the New Testament about prophecy being an encouragement. Mm. It's not a call to the whole nation or anything like that. It's, It's an encouragement and yeah, I don't know if you mm. can speak more. Yeah, about. I mean you're right that that because because now there's a different dispensation. Before, you know, God was in heaven, and the way that you related to Him was through the temple mm. and through obedience to the law. In the new covenant, because of Jesus taking our our sin away and making us right with God, and that we have the presence of His presence with us all the time. The yes, Holy Spirit w- yes. literally dwells within every yeah. believer and comes upon a believer in a baptism. Um, that prophecy is di- like it has changed. There's a different way to relate to God. Mm. The word is bringing us back to, to the Lord. The spirit leads us to the Lord. Like all of those things are happening. So the New Testament prophecy is for edification and encouragement and comfort and not necessarily operating in that prophetic office. Yes. But yes. God still calls people to prophetic office mm-hmm. um, where they are called to raise up prophets and they are called to to give more specific mm-hmm. speaking on God's mm-hmm. behalf. Mm-hmm. So there are, prof- same as like, you know, it's Ephesians chapter 4 where it says God has, Jesus has given these gifts to the church, the apostle, prophet, teacher yes, like yes. That, the shepherd and so that is at work but it's not again it's not like hey every other person is a is a has a prophetic office like mm. that role of 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 prophet mm. but we can all be prophetic you know yeah in 
Holy Spirit, like, is there a word for this person? Is there a word for our church? Is there something you want to say? And he can give us an impression. He can give us words. He can give us images. But that's, you know, people who have the, 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 the office of the product will, product, prophet, will give you specifics sometimes and say, hey, this is, and they won't do it to shame you. They'll actually do it to build you up. Like God is saying this to you. People who can operate in the gifting of the prophetic would be, like, hey, God loves you. I, I get a feeling like you're going through something difficult right now. Mm. And I just want to remind you of that. And I just feel God's love for you. And I want to pray for you. Like, that's, yes. you know, that's a different yes. way of doing it. Like, it's not to call yes. other people out yeah. and to shame them. Yeah. But to actually build them back to God. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues. Um, this is where I think people in Western church, if you've not been in a Pentecostal church, it can get a bit mm. strange for people like that don't understand it. Mm. How would you best explain it? So for me, I would explain it as everyone who gets saved gets the Spirit living in their heart. Yes. But the baptism of the Spirit is more of the Spirit in your heart, so much that it overflows mm. and you speak in a language you do not understand or you cry, or you just experience something different. Yes. Um, and yeah, you could be speaking in a heavenly language or another language on earth that you've never spoken. Yeah. And um, and it's there so that you can tell others about Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like what we see in scriptures that the Spirit, like you regenerate, like the only way that you can become a Christian is if the Holy Spirit makes you alive mm, to God. Yes. And then he comes upon you to for power to be yes, a witness. Yes. Right? That's really yes. Acts chapter one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, quick question. Do you pray in tongues? Not as much as I should. Ah, mm. you see public shaming happening, right? <laughs> <laughs> do you pray in tongues? Yes. Yes. I do because I don't know what to pray most of the time yes. because the needs are so big. I'm just yes. like I need I need I need the Holy Spirit to, to guide my prayer. I think praying in tongues really strengthens you. Um I think it's so important and I wish I prayed in tongues more. And yeah, like they said, you know, like Paul said, I speak thousands of yeah more than all of you yes <laughs> of words and tongues he knew it was important and he knew it was um spiritually edifying mm. um but i i had a different experience of being baptized in the spirit mm. i don't remember when i was baptized in the spirit okay but tell us tell us we want to know i was in um, kids before. church okay and the leaders got us all together and prayed for the baptism of the Spirit over all us kids. I love that. And we just started speaking in tongues and we were baptized. <laughs> and because we didn't know what was going on and we we were like, wow, let's do this thing. We weren't shy. We weren't inhibited. Um, we just prayed in tongues. I love that. Do you know what I love about that? Because there's no junior Holy Spirit, right? He's no. not. It's not when you cross a certain age group, then you become yes. a... Oh, that's so cool. I love that. Um, I've never asked you that before. That's so yeah. interesting. And and I think it's amazing. We mustn't limit the work of the Holy Spirit in our kids' lives mm. because John the Baptist was baptized in the Spirit when he was in his mother's tummy. That's true. And so there really is no limits. There's God wants to work with us spiritually no matter our age. Mm. And I think it's something like you can, you can reason, like there's a level that you, you can know, but there's a lot about it that you can't actually reason yeah. or understand. Like yes. even biblical accounts of people being baptized in the Holy Spirit before they were even water baptized. Yes. It's not like yes. God doesn't fit into our box. No. We, we just, he's just doing what he wants to mm. do. And it's us going, okay, cool, God. Like we're part of this, this ride. Yeah. Um, I remember being baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was also a kid. Before I actually had, before I actually, like, I, th I thought I loved God, but I didn't, like, I don't feel like I ever had this point of, like, I'm a Christian now, yes, you know? Yes. Um, and it was in a, it was in a crash, and it was just, this lady came and prayed for us. What were you doing in a crash? Were you I was after old? school. Oh. No, what's the aftercare? Oh, aftercare. Yeah, yeah, aftercare, aftercare. <clears throat> and... 
prayed and it's just like mm, for missions and like calling this stuff out and yeah i was just like laughing in the spirit baptizing the spirit and then um the kind of the real not the real moment like that was a fake moment but i think the one for me that that was this was out of a real place was yes. um in high school uh, in matric just you know was prayed for the infilling of the holy spirit mm. baptized were you at church hey were you at church it was like a special meeting it wasn't a sunday <clears throat> service okay. it was like a special meeting um because this like prophet lady came and yes. brilliant and um gave prophetic words and we're baptizing people in the holy spirit and yeah that was that was a moment again like um laughter and crying probably all part of the mm. same thing and mm. And then invited to pray, to to receive a language mm. to pray, and, and I did. And since then, ever been praying. But I think it's also, and I think, I think for believers, we should all want that. Yes. We should all want more of the presence and the manifestation mm. of the Holy Spirit mm. in our lives. But I think we mustn't fall into the trap of going, "Oh, so you don't speak in tongues? You can't pray in tongues? Ooh, you must not be God's favorite. Like I am, if the spiritual." Mm like that's just no, absolute that's garbage do you know what i mean that's absolute garbage so it's not like we, and, and we don't we speak in tongues and no like we, don't, we never <laughs> yes. do that we don't talk we don't walk around telling people about that and often when we are praying in tongues it's under our breath it's you know um and it feels it's honestly it's boring because you don't it's paul writes in the scriptures like your mind is unfruitful mm. so i pray with my understanding while i'm praying in tongues because i'm like kill two birds with one stone <laughs> <laughs> But, um, and again, it comes down to faith and how you operate in yeah. gifts. And, and the thing is that it's a gift and every good gift comes from God. But what we don't want to do is get up on a Sunday. Come on, everybody, we're going to pray yeah. in tongues all together. Yeah. So what we have done is we have had a moments after services where we've dedicated to baptism of the Holy Spirit, infilling of the Holy Spirit. And we explain it and we, mm. we've had moments where people have received the speak gift yes. of speaking in tongues because yes. we pray for that as well yeah. with the laying on of hands. We don't do it all the time because, you know, like as much as we would want to do it, but we're trying to do it in an orderly way that shows love to people that are mm. there as well. And, and that's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13. All these gifts are amazing, but unless we're doing them in love, they're absolutely pointless. Mm. Like it's mm. just a resounding gong. Um, so... Yeah, that's, I mean, baptism is important. And, and what I see in the scriptures is that, you know, when you read, we're in this journey with Flourish at the moment. I don't know when people will listen to this or watch this, but we're going through Acts. Yes. And you can see in Acts is multiple expressions of the mm. infilling of the Holy Spirit. Yes, and I think it's yes. something, hey, just because you got filled with the Spirit 20 years ago, don't rely, like, no. what about more infilling? Yes. What about more of His yes. presence, more of His anointing so that He can fill you for His work? Mm. And and the thing is, like, if we're not getting that, if we're not being empowered by the Holy Spirit, we are useless at ministry mm. because He is the one who does, the, who does the work. Who changes people's lives. He's the one who changes people's lives. It's I heard one guy say, which I love, it's like, it's, it's um, you know, like a, a, an oil lamp. When the oil runs out, the wick burns. It burns up and it burns out. Yeah. And a lot of people are doing ministry without the empowering and yes. anointing of the Holy Spirit because yes. they need to be infilled, need to be filled mm. regularly. Mm. Um, if you've got oil in your lamp, the wick never burns. Oh, yeah. It's the oil that's burning. And he's like, sometimes you're like on dry toast, trying to spread too little, you know, butter <laughs> over dry toast. You know, that's, that's kind of how it can feel like in the Christian life. Yes. But when we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, it's mm. not like that. And I think it's just a reminder for me, even in this conversation, to constantly create spaces where our church can be filled mm. and where we're taking responsibility to keep our cups full, yes. our jars of oil kind of full. And that's very yeah. metaphorical. But. Sometimes in my quiet time, I'll ask God to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Oh, amazing. Um, but then are you being quiet? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> In my devotional time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> because I know that, like what you said, you know, your wick is going to burn out. Yeah. And I don't want to rely on the time when I was baptized when I was 10 years old. No, no. <laughs> you and I are, are, I mean, we, like, we, God's used us to do a lot and we don't even see everything that he's done. But we are not that good. <laughs> we are not that good. Great. We are actually probably 
subpar below you you you're above par i'm below par sub uh, like you know sub average no we just know how but normal we are we are so and normal we can't, but there's not nothing and we in know us. we need help there's nothing in us that can look when when i look at that hall at sunningdale primary and i think am i leader enough do I have enough for all these people? And I realize I don't. It's Jesus. He's like, come in there. I got a word that's going to change. <laughs> like, yes, the word will change your life because it's empowered through the Spirit. It's, you know, all of that. So it's just confidence. <laughs> so we rely very much. If, with, if the Holy Spirit wasn't, wasn't anointing, gracing, blessing, I think like <clears throat> we, just, we just wouldn't be doing this. No, we wouldn't. Because <laughs> we can't. <laughs> <laughs> that's the beautiful thing of doing this long enough you know you get to the end of yourself that's that's a good thing <laughs> um, but like again we were saying manifestation of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit are important because again it's a gift that God gives the church mm. for being a witness for setting people free for bringing the kingdom of mm. God and the reality of the mm. kingdom of God into people's lives and not only that but we see that as a precedent throughout the throughout the new testament mm, mm. and it was like yeah this is part of church like so we we know that we need more of that but what is the what do you think is the best environment to cultivate that kind of thing well you have chatted about creating a space in the service on the side but i think life group is also a place it's like a safe environment with people you know and to encourage each other, those prophetic words that encourage, mm. to pray for each other, to pray for the infilling. Mm. And we don't want to make life group disorderly, mm. but I think we can do it with respect and care for each other. For sure. And, and, um, and yeah, definitely also we used to have... Um, those praise and worship nights. Yes. But now, you know, venue, it's difficult. It's different. Yeah, it's different so is difficult. We have to find other other places. Places. For sure. And it's and you know, the New Testament church didn't have this amazing hall with praise and worship and lights and they prayed wherever they were. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's quite right. I think as believers we need to go Holy Spirit, lead me today. Do you mm -hmm. want to do something through me today? Do you want to say anything to anybody today? And being like, being us being aware mm -hmm. of that. And I think a great way, place to practice that is in a small group, is in community groups. But of course, you're in the community. You know, if there's someone there for the brand for their first time, you're not going to go swinging on. I'm going to say swinging on channel this, <laughs> but you're not going to go and try something. You, you want to get that person like mm -hmm. connected first, so that mm -hmm. there's trust that's been built, right? I think in a high mm -hmm. trust environment. It's, it's a lot easier for us to start cultivating those mm -hmm. gifts. And I think even from us, maybe it's a, my, the takeaway that I'm getting from our conversation is how can we encourage environments where people can take steps yes. and learn and grow? Yes. You know, because even when you start praying in tongues, most people don't start with this like huge vocabulary yeah. of spiritual words. A lot of the time it's with like three or four words mm -hmm. or this is the same word. Mm -hmm. And then it builds and it develops mm -hmm. over time as your faith and confidence in God mm -hmm. grows. And I think it's the same thing with all the manifestations of the gifts. Like we need environments where we can learn and grow and develop. And if we get it wrong, that there's enough trust in the room to go, that's okay. Like, Mm -hmm. let's let's learn from it let's not stop it let's learn mm -hmm. from it and um yeah i think it's probably something we do need to talk about a little bit more than what we do yeah. um but again i think we want our services to be a place where there is order that the holy spirit has got mm -hmm. freedom but that we're not just creating this like chaotic environment yeah. where people don't understand what's going on where the only people who are loving it are the Christians who have been Christians for 20 years. But the person who's seeking God is like, oh, I don't know what I've walked into. Mm. Um, but that there are spaces for these things and order yeah. And, yeah. and just trying to follow Paul's advice to the Corinthians church mm. like, and, and see how that can help us to grow. And me, I'm asking God now, like, God, Lord, let me, is there a message that I can share with someone? 
think just having that awareness mm. rather than relying on yourself and your own wisdom. Yeah. So even someone who's not maybe ministering in church world, if you're in a board meeting, like what a great place to actually ask the Holy Spirit for a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. Yes. And you don't have to tell the board, by the way, or in you know, in the board in the in the office, this is what the Lord says. You can say, Hey, I, I get this feel that da, 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 and you share it, right? That can still be powerful. So mm. yeah, I'd, I'd love to see the manifestations continue to grow. I, I think it's part of revival. But I also think the biggest thing of revival is souls in the kingdom of God, not necessarily manifestations. Um, but yeah any parting words before we close I just want to say that we have a prayer team yeah. who is available after every service very good who are ready to pray to get a word of wisdom yeah to encourage to pray for you to be filled with the spirit yes um, make use of it. I and mean, God gives them insight, yes, like spiritual insight yes. into things, right? Gary and Patty lead their team. They seasoned Christians, full of wisdom. And yes, go to them. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. I love that. Cool. Um, I think that's it. And and you know, as always, when I just want to encourage you. This is a very new format podcast for Lara and I. And if you've got any specific questions. Please just let us know in the comments. We'll check it or send us messages and emails. We'd love to try and be as helpful as we can with this mm -hmm. podcast. Um, and it'll go beyond Sunday. So different kinds of topics we will touch on. Um, and really wanting to make sure that we're feeding you in a way that you need right now. So however we can help, that's the goal. It's been awesome talking to you again. Yes. Hey, we should do this every week. Hey, we, <laughs> we, like, hey, we've just had tea time. Hey, we've had tea, a tea time date and had a good conversation about spiritual things. Anyway, God bless you guys and see you at church on Sunday.